Intentional Learning at TI, your roadmap for learning. And, and so uh, this, by the way, you've won two awards from Chief Learning Officer for your strategy. Three. Oh, two, two strategy, right? Two, two awards for strategy, for your learning strategy from Chief yeah. Learning Officer. Um, and by the way, just as a quick plug, our CLO Learning and Practice Awards, of which Michelle is a winner, is now open. So I encourage you to check it out. Um, and if you're considering applying for, for an award, please do so. But you've won two awards from, from us for learning strategy. Two years running Learning Elite, uh, which three. is a three years running Learning Elite, which is our benchmark program for top learning, top organizations for learning and development. So you've gone from zero to 400 people, from being you know really a, a startup Scared. to an award-winning learning organization. And, and kind of the center point of that is this uh, the learning at, 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 at TI and roadmap. So maybe you can talk us through a little bit about what this is and, and sort of how, how it came to be and what it I'll tell you what, one of the reasons, I get asked to speak at a lot of conferences and they want to hear about our, how we're building a ready now leadership pipeline. And the whole, the art learning strategy is based on the idea of readiness. So it's a progressive career um, learning strategy where you, it, it, earlier someone was talking about culture, how do you keep the culture with the learning, etc. And our culture is a very fun culture. We have. 83% um, of our population are millennials, it's their first job, they're in a variety of countries. In the United States, contact centers are not that big of a career space for people, no one wants to be there, really, and um, they're usually looking for something else, but in all the other countries we operate, it's a very prestigious role. In fact, I have doctors on my team. So we built this learning at TI Roadmap so that it starts when a new hire comes in, and they go through their onboarding, they get the foundation, they learn the product they're going to support. And then as they're going through, if they want to, if they aspire to be a leader, they can start in our leadership development, emerging leaders program, which is open to all team members. We call them team members. It's open to all team members. And then they go through this, it's like online piece of it. So we use technology for that. Part of it we developed, part of it was from Skillsoft. And it's really what's a leader, what's a manager, all that kind of stuff. And then we have a tool gate at the end, and if they pass it, if they score high and they've had the stamina to stick through the program, then they can apply to go through the next stage to prepare to become a leader. You guys were talking earlier about how to get people interested in learning, and that is one of the things that we have done. Almost every single one of our programs is a readiness program, so that if you want to advance in your career, you're going to want to go to this, and you're going to want to participate. And so we've got that one building a pipeline of first line leaders, first uh, frontline leaders. And then at the end of the frontline leader program, it's like five stages that could take three years if you're in the, because the last one is you've been in the role for a while, you're a high performer, and now you want to prepare for the next level of management. So you go through this six month program and you get certified. If all of these have certification at the end. You get certified and proven that you're ready to move into that role. Now you're ready for promotion. You go in a pool. With our growth rate, 20% year over year, I have to have at least 500 new leaders every, new frontline leaders every year. Because, I mean, you have to, you're growing. And when I came in, they didn't have any development, so they were kind of like, they didn't know what to do. And um, we did a lot of triage to stop the bleeding and fix those problems while we were building this long term. But as you progress, you're, you're continually growing so that you're ready to be promoted. I know in my past, there's been a lot, you get into the job, and then you learn what you're doing. So the first six months, you're probably still like not quite sure. We try to turn it around so that when you get in the job, you know what to do. But then, once you're in the job, we start applying more. So you get more learning as you're going through the job. So it never stops, really. So can you maybe back us up? When we think about this learning at TI, this has obviously been a long-term project to build out. How did you get this started? I mean, how was it sort of, uh, what was the genesis of it? Obviously, you were doing it kind of, your bootstrapping it from the beginning. How does it fit into what TELUS was trying to do, where TELUS International was trying to go? What's, what's the, the beginning point? Well, so the beginning, so they wanted a pipeline, and they said LMB was priority. And I talked to all the senior leaders. I built this really complex mind map of everything that was going wrong and needed to happen in the company, and I've always used that as my guide. And what I did is I, I kind of listened to what they're saying and where the problems were, and I, and I was trying to you know, have a logical background, so I'm trying to logically fit it all together. And I would draw it out on a piece of paper, and then I went and socialized it. At the same time, I'm trying to teach my team how to be L&D professionals, because they weren't at, yet. 
So there was probably a span of about nine months where I was socializing the idea and they were learning and growing. So we really hadn't built much yet, except we were stopping bleeding where there was some bleeding. Um, so, but then as you socialize, you listen to the ideas and they're saying, well, that doesn't really work, and how about this, and how about that? And so it continually was evolving until we built it out. Even today, though, we launched it in early 2015. Last year, we ran uh, Metrics That Matter against all the programs, came out with some great feedback use that feedback to then evolve it even further. So it's a living, breathing um, strategy. It's not you know, set in stone forever, but it does have the same visual, and it has the same, um, it starts with I evolve, I aspire, I excel, and then I lead, and so we plug and throw <coughs> things in there quite a bit. So it's just the evolve it, and as the business grows. The other thing that we measure success on is our attrition and our engagement, and the attrition level has plummeted from 60% what it was before we first got here. And last year we had 25% voluntary attrition, which is 90% less than our competitors. So, and then we had our engagement was in the low 70s when I got here, and now it was at 84% last year. When you think about that you're growing at 20% and you have 25% attrition, you have a lot of new people coming in. And so that's pretty, Pretty, that's an accomplishment to get to 84. We're, we're striving for higher, of course. Yeah. So you must have a pretty engaging learning experience for learners at the fact that they're, the engagement is going up. What does that look like you know, on a sort of a daily or weekly basis? What is the learning experience for a TELUS International? So it depends on the role you're in. So if you're a frontline or you're an individual contributor, it's different than if you're a leader. Now, the leaders use degree and things like that. They also have some programs they can go to and learn more about their function, like you know how to run a call center, how to you know strategic thinking, the financials, etc. But if you are a frontline uh, team member, you have gone through these programs and you're now on the floor and you're operating, right? And you're learning as you go. And you have a team leader who coaches you nearly every day. They've learned how to coach. You also have uh, we have a lot of continuous learning opportunities that they can go to. And we advertise them through a platform called T-Life that we have in each of our regions. And it's like the Facebook, and everybody goes there every single day. It's not a learning management system, but it does advertise things. So we have things like in sessions where we'll have a leader. Talk, it's like a TED Talk. They'll give a talk about some specific topic. Those are huge. They're very popular. We also have videos of leader conversations that I've done with an animated whiteboard and like, they go watch those, we advertise those all the time. Those are really popular. We have learn-ins, which are classroom sessions. And then um, we have also, we just started something called Learn-In Sparks, which you guys were talking about, the little bursts and all that kind of stuff. So we've taken little pieces from every program that we do, and we put it into a 10 to, minute, 10 to 15 minute spark. And it's online, PowerPoint, there's like four ways you can get to it. J job aids, on the website, everything. So they're constantly, they have all this learning around them. We have posters, and they're constantly reminded that there's learning. And their managers support it. Because, of course, they want them to perform at a higher level because we get measured by our clients. Mm -hmm. 